In the past six years, Myora Village has conducted financial numeracy tests in India, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Tanzania, Timor-Leste, and the Solomon Islands. Last year, as part of Intermedia's Financial Inclusion Insights program, a basic version of our approach was tested in Cote d'Ivoire and Myanmar in nationally randomized samples of over 3,000 adults. We included a test to check out how many people had trouble reading a number worth between $10 and $100 in their own currency. Even very poor people must deal with these amounts from time to time, and most microloans are at least this large. Now in Myanmar, only 10% of the population are officially incapable of reading and writing. Yet an extraordinary 36% of the national population could not read numbers that represented between $10 and $100 in their own currency. In Cote d'Ivoire, 45% can't read numbers this big. Oral information management is the practice of managing information without relying on text and other code that illiterate adults can't use. OIM has no effect whatever on how financial institutions keep their records or should be keeping them, but it may have an effect on how they present their records to their customers, especially to illiterate ones. In our field research at MOVE, we have learned that cash is a very important OIM tool. Treated as a way of counting and calculating, it handles larger numbers than oral adults can easily handle using oral numeracy. As cash is at the center of every financial transaction, this is a very useful insight. It allows us to develop things like cash scroll bars and keyboards for mobile wallets or for ATMs, and to test methods of integrating play money into sites where financial transactions take place as an aid to calculating and negotiating. Another key element of oral information management is iconography. Oral icons need to be intuitively obvious to illiterate adults and quickly and easily guessable. They should be memorable and quickly relearnable if they are forgotten. And they have to be local. An image that means send money in India may communicate a quite different message in Sierra Leone or in Papua New Guinea. What is easily guessable and memorable to an illiterate adult is not the same as what is easily guessable and memorable to a literate one. There is much iconography in digital finance already, and unfortunately, much of it is counterintuitive or even misleading to illiterate adults because it has many literate protocols, rules, and assumptions deeply embedded in it, very often without our awareness. First and foremost, tools must enhance client-side financial product usability. Wherever practical, tools should provide positive incentives to clients to acquire useful financial numeracy and financial literacy skills. The process of tool design must be client-guided. And on a net basis, OIM tools should strengthen existing control systems by making clients more aware of what's taking place in their accounts. And finally, oral tools should not inconvenience or embarrass literate clients. I believe that there is a huge opportunity here. With the diffusion of smartphones and their enormous graphic and other capabilities, it is possible for the first time to really reach out to illiterate and semi-literate adults. We can now provide them with solutions that will help them to feel genuinely safe while they are navigating through their own personal financial transactions. Two-thirds of all illiterate and semi-literate adults are women, and women often face particularly limiting judgments in the areas of numeracy and mathematics. Math anxiety is very common among girls and women, and there is perhaps no clearer context for math anxiety than a formal financial transaction. We can and we should change this. If you would like to know more about our research or about our design solutions, please contact us.